This is Chris at Straight Out of Camera Science, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make a totally awesome 80s uh, pet portrait. I've got my sister uh, Kate here and Jimmy the cat. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is um, get, a, get a test shot. I already set the light up, and um, we'll see how this goes. This is a, a Westcott XXL Octabox. I've got it on an 8600, and um, so we're gonna get the exposure here with the gray card. So Kate, if I could have you put your nose right on that target. Perfect. And uh, I'm gonna get my test shot. All right, so it looks like we're about a half a stop over. Kate, if you could hold that up one more time. Perfect. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm at uh, 1 200th of a second F8 at ISO 100. I'm gonna shoot square JPEGs for these um, because who wouldn't make this their Facebook or Instagram profile picture? Um, I'm gonna shoot raw as a backup just in case I need the extra space for cropping. All right, okay, so if you can sit up nice and tall and then hold Jimmy kinda up with, your, with his legs out and then make sure I can see that bow tie. Hold them on the other side because I think I'm going to put them on that side. Good. Awesome. All right, I'm going to back up just a little bit here. Jimmy. Good. Kate, bring your chin forward just a little bit, like kind of make your neck longer, if that makes sense. Good. Jimmy. All right, so whoop, there we go. So see if you can get him with like both hands under his paws. Or actually that would work too if you can hold him up in that position. Can you get him higher? Jimmy. All right, those uh, those I think are pretty awesome. All right, so we're gonna get the picture of just Jimmy. Which one do you think is gonna be easier? Um, maybe we'll try the ham first. You wanna try the table, the turkey and the table? All right, so we're gonna set up the uh, we're gonna set up the table here, and hopefully lure Jimmy in with a little bit of uh, turkey. Um, all right, so for the uh, the cat picture, I'm using the same settings, and I've got the table roughly in the same spot. I don't need to fill the frame with his head, um, but I do have the macro lens on in case he does let me, uh, you know, get close. Uh, and that's actually perfect. I think we got it. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So I've got my images open in Photoshop now, and we're going to composite these together uh, for the 80s cat portrait. Uh, so here's the portrait of my sister uh, with her cat, and then here's the cat that we're going to add into the background. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is just take the rectangular selection tool, and I'm going to select a fairly wide selection around the cat here. And I'm going to hit Control C or Command C to copy and then paste that into my other image. And then to help with placement, I'm going to lower the opacity down to around 50% just so I can see um, what's going on. And then I'm going to hit Control T or Command T to transform um, the image. 
and then you want to make sure that you're keeping the proportions the same and then we're going to drag this image into place and just kind of resize it um, until it fits right so what i'm looking for here is i don't want too much of the whiskers crossing over the face because you are going to have to mask those off for it to look like the cat is behind um, so i could bring the cat a little bit lower um, that looks pretty good and maybe we'll go a little bit bigger right here um, double click to apply the transformation and then there the cat is in the image um, so at this point if you want you can bring the opacity back up and I'm going to add a layer mask and then we want to uh, hit B or go to the brush tool over here and we're going to select a large brush and then I keep the the hardness at zero to start off and then we can go through and uh, fix things in there if we need to um, so you want to select uh, the color black for the mask um, or for quick switching back and forth if you just hit the X key that's going to switch back and forth between black and white um, so you can easily fix your mask as you go and oh, yeah, let's see and then we want to make sure that our flow is at 100 otherwise you might leave some pieces behind that you didn't mean to um, so I'm going to paint just around the edges here and I'm going to go outside just to kind of soften this one so it's not completely hard against the edge that's kind of personal preference right there and same thing up top being careful uh, not to run over the ears and then when we get in here, we want to reveal all of the person's face while making sure that we get rid of the gray. And I'm going to zoom in just a little further. And again, with this soft brush, it's okay that we're kind of hitting the whiskers a little bit. Ideally, there wouldn't be any crossover, but I think that should look pretty natural right there. And I'm going to hit a little bit of his body, the cat's body right there to kind of fade it and we want this part to all be sharp and one thing you can do to kind of check the edges is unclick that the background layer and that's going to show you exactly where everything is I can see I got a little bit of the ear up here so I can hit that X key um, and I'm still on my layer mask and just make sure that I don't soften the ears or any other part of the cat that I didn't want to uh, to eliminate there. I can bring that background layer back in. Um, so there is the the cat in the image, and then we're going to go ahead and grab that opacity and drag it back down. Uh, so this is going to be roughly to taste, uh, depending on how much you want the cat to show in the background. I tend to like these somewhere around 50, and I think that looks pretty good. Um, so if you're doing just the, the, the model and the cat at this point, you're finished, you can flatten your image and resize it for your output. Um, but I'm also going to show you how to add the laser overlay that's available on the site. And to do that, you can just go to where the file is located if it's not already um, open. So here's the laser overlay. And we can drag that just right on top of the image. And it's going to drop it in there as a smart object. And then you just need to resize to make sure that it's covering the images. Um, it's not necessary to keep the proportions even if you have a different aspect ratio and want to change it. Um, but this will let you see where the lasers are going to be. And then you can adjust it um, if there's any areas that are going to be hard to mask um, or where you don't want the laser to go. Um, you can just kind of rearrange it a little bit so that those things are not an issue. Um, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to double click to apply the transformation and that layout looks pretty good to me. Uh, um, let's see. Yep, so before you so can add, add the mask in there and um, we're going to go a little bit closer for this since it's going to be a little bit finer uh, masking and we're going to bring this brush size way down. And then for this I don't like to use zero. Um, I tend to go somewhere around 60 to 70 ish and that's going to depend a little bit on the size of the um, laser you have the 
resolution of your camera and then what kind of edges you're masking off. So you might have to play with that a little bit um, to get what you want. Oh, we'll hit the X key again to switch to the black brush for the mask. And then we're just going to start masking off where we don't want this laser to be. Um, so on the edges, you just get kind of close. And you don't want any clear areas where, you know, it's overlapping. And you can see how that, uh, that slightly soft edge just helps. So you don't get the hard lines from the brush. So the lasers are going behind our subject, so anywhere in here um, that you see it, you're just going to go ahead and mask it off. And let's see, that is actually the uh, model shoulder right there. So we'll go all the way down to the edges. And then once you've got those edges done, you can just kind of blast through the middle part. Let's see a little corner of the shirt there, a little extra piece. All right, let's see if we got it all there. Um, so that looks pretty good. So it is uh, totally up to you and your vision whether or not you want to mask off the stuff here to have the background cat in front of the lasers or not. I kind of like it going in front for this one, um, so I'm going to leave it that way. And then I saw a couple issues on the shirt while we were in there. Uh, so if you have any uh, retouching or anything like that, I just, I'm going to grab the um, spot healing brush and it's almost inevitable when you're doing the, the cats that you're going to have hair all over the place. Um, so grab any, any that are, uh, you know, sticking out and run that spot heal brush over them. And then I saw one spot at the very bottom where it looked like I got the hand. And that's a little distracting at the edge, so we're going to go ahead and just take that out too. And holy cow, look at this. Oh, I'm not going to fix all those. Um, this is pretty high resolution. Oh, and you can see a little spot where I missed the uh, the laser there. Um, so we're going to go back to that mask and the brush and just clean that up. Um, all right, so without getting too nitpicky, we got all the major stuff there. Um, so if you think you might come back and, um, you know, re-edit a little bit, go to File and Save. Um, as a PSD or a TIFF file with all the layers, that way you can go back and edit things if you need to make changes. And then I'm going to flatten one of these down and go to uh, image and image size. And for social media, we're gonna use 2048 on the long edge using bicubic sharper. And then I'm gonna hit this with unsharp mask at 500% and a 0.2 radius, which is gonna give us a real nice social media sharpened file. 
and then we're going to go to save as we're going to make this one as a jpeg you want to make sure that srgb is selected here and then quality level 10 for the jpeg um, so that's it there's start to finish making the cat composite and adding the laser overlay if you guys have any questions shoot me a message or an email and can't wait to see the images that you make